Hello, good evening, all of you. Thank you so much for joining in. Yeah, thank you so much for being here. And uh, you are here for something special that, <laughs> that I can tell you. So before we go into that something special, I'm here to welcome and honor the guest, the queen of today's event, Geeta Ramanujam. So I going to call her Geeta ma'am. Yeah, because <laughs> she was my storytelling teacher when I started. So it was in 2013 that I met her at in Max Muller Bhavan, where she gave a splendid workshop, a one day workshop in Chennai. And after that, I met her and I asked, uh, do you have any storytelling course? And she said, I have an institute called Katalaya. And now if you look at Katalaya, it's one of the leading international institutes in storytelling. And, and back then she just opened Katalaya doors for me. And uh, I took her intensive storytelling course, a diploma course, and uh, boy, that one week was really heavenly. Met a lot of friends, met her, interacted with her. And so she gave me the foundations for storytelling. And I'm really, really grateful to ma'am for that. Not only that, Geeta ma'am has like been in touch with us throughout. And even for this book launch, when I called her, she just readily agreed. No, she didn't ask me, who are you? I forgot you. She has like trained over 9,000 storytellers, 9,000 trainers, but yet, but yet she does remember. And that's so special about her. And I'm so happy, ma'am, that you have come up with this book, Tales from the World. Yeah, I have your book. Yeah, I'm not lying. I have your book, Tales from the Book. And literally, ma'am has traveled to different parts of the world and got this book done. Yeah, she is like. So now don't mistake me. So don't think that she has traveled for the sake of the book. She is an international storyteller and she has traveled to about like 43 countries and 27 states across India to stamp the fact that storytelling is an art that everyone has to learn everyone has to follow yeah what is life without storytelling and she's been doing a great service to storytelling and i've been one of the few fortunates to witness or witness is a wrong word to receive that service from her and grow as a storyteller Geeta ma'am, lots can be talked about you and I can keep going on and on and on, taking away all your time, but I'm not going to do that. Please come over and give us, uh, give us that you always do lots of stories and lots of love. Over to you ma'am. Thank you so much, Ali. <laughs> Uh, you know, uh, the most beautiful uh, gift that any teacher or any person who has imparted, I wouldn't even say teacher, I'm just a facilitator who has imparted a bit of what one knows and the other person receives it as a, they say, prasadam, you know, and Alvin is one of them because uh, you know, not uh, I, I may not forget everyone, but I don't choose to remember people who don't remember me also, right? So Alvin is a few, uh, one of those beautiful people, I think. Um, and for a student, it's not just the learning, but I think a lot of humility and gratitude are part of also uh, something that I cherish a lot. Uh, if you have noticed, uh, even in uh, Tales from the World, I have tried to acknowledge each and every person who has uh, traveled the journey, and uh, including a shopkeeper uh, in South Africa, uh, Marion and Colin, who lived about 80 miles from Edinburgh 
and they called me for an uh, ordinary birthday party that they said you are in scotland so i have a car that's what colin said and i had one day break uh, from the scottish storytelling festival you know they pack you i mean naturally because they're calling you from india they are paying for your stay they are paying your airfare uh so they naturally like to send you to different places of course it's lovely to travel so i had to go to one isle of bute i had to go to glasgow i had to go every time how arbor isle they send me to different places when an indian travels especially and an indian who loves to smell to feel a place to love a place you know like i i i have it from childhood that i owe it to my parents they always taught me how to travel also you see today uh, children have to be told i feel uh, on what what do you want to actually see when you travel isn't it uh, not just you know uh, on the uh, uh, whatsapp all the time you're sitting in a beautiful park and uh, lovely trees and lovely surrounding lovely smelling flowers and two people are sitting on the bench what's the point right so you you need to tell people how to look how to listen you know that is part of storytelling actually and it's a parents job to do that and my parents that time they they were not called storytellers but my father prepared us for the travel and said watch out look look at that special tree so that is how i developed a, a sense for traveling and so i relished traveling i combined traveling with stories and so when i was called i know oh this this harbor is so different and this island is so different right and so i arrived on an island and i remember it was called uh, isle of bute and this lady took me by a ship and when i landed there i saw all the shops all hoardings i felt like jailalitha um, all cutouts of me which you won't find in a foreign country actually and every bookshop every part of that whole place was filled with my blow ups and i was feeling fantastic i was feeling uh, shy and uh, i didn't realize that uh, people in in scotland would do that right so uh, that is that is the beauty of uh, watching looking listening to their stories uh, so there was a uh, marion and colin who said it was my 55th birthday and they said you know we have a surprise so colin came in a car and it was quite a old car a rickety car i would say <laughs> dun, 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 dun. and then he i was scared it will stop on the way but through the meadows through the moors that they say you know in england you call it moors right so he he took me to 80 miles off edinburgh and uh, i i suddenly saw a lovely small it was called the blue cottage i entered and there was this huge cake which marion had baked and said once upon a time and happy birthday and surprise were all these people and there were about 35 storytellers and each one of them was going to share a story with me and i wish i brought out all the 35 stories in the book but i just brought out one um it's called brownie the cow because he gave me a book a uh, called folk tales from scotland with a beautiful foreword and i think that's the best gift you can give uh the other thing i still remember is he gave me a huge key you know you read that only in alice in wonderland and uh, uh, uh in fairy tales and this key the, the key was so huge and heavy and it was in a casket and he said i'm going to carry this with you and he took me to a chapel what they call as a chapel and it was near the cemetery and he said you are going to open the door to this chapel so i opened the door to that chapel of course 
he held my hand to put the key and turn the key because it was so heavy. And inside there were huge chests. And in one of the chests, there were like scrolls of stories. He asked me to open the chest and he said, you are going to inaugurate this chest of stories for us. So, you know, these things stayed in my heart so much. Um, and, and so when I wrote to Puffin, the Penguin Publishers, I sent them 100 stories, only hoping, hoping that they would pick up this story and this foreword. Of course, they didn't put so much of the foreword, but I'm sharing this with you. So there's lots more that uh, goes into storytelling, not just uh, as Alvin mentioned, finding a story, but the story stayed with me. And I think it was the most uh, cherished moment that I can remember, yeah? So it was not just the stories that I put in, I put in a little snippet on where and how I found these stories. The first story, if you uh, recall, is I think many of uh, Academy students will remember. It is my favorite tale. Yes, the mountain and the bird. And uh, I, I never share it in public, but I used to share it only in the Academy sessions. But this time I decided that it will be my first story in the book. And of course, it, it ha it, it's, it's different when you listen to a tale and it's different when you read a story. And it's also different when uh, you have to write a story. So it was a lot of things uh, that one had to go through because I sent them as a narrative. Then one of them said, the publishers, the editor said, no, 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 we want it in the reading format, okay? So I had to change and send it as a textual format. But the third editor who came in, <laughs> she said, no, no, I think it should be the way you tell the story. <laughs> So again, I had to change that. And again, I sent another version of the narrative. But it's not very easy to put the entire narrative into a written form. For instance, um, I will tell you one incident. Uh, when I went to uh, Brazil, uh, there was a hall of 1,500 people. Can you believe that? 1,500 people waiting to listen to a story. So this was an old opera theater and there they speak only Portuguese. They only speak Portuguese. They don't, uh, they don't even understand Spanish. Okay, so here was this crowd and there was an interpreter who was uh, a master's in, in, in language interpretation, what we call as a linguist. And he was a graduate, postgraduate from Harvard University. So he was there, he sat with me for nearly half a day to understand my story because he had to do what we call as simultaneous interpretation, okay? Simultaneous interpretation. That is, as I'm talking, he had to interpret it. Now, every chair in that hall had a loud, uh, a headphone. So every person had a headphone, 1,500 people, I was supposed to tell the story in English and he was to interpret it. So when I told him there stood a huge, big mountain and then the clouds, they just went by and the wind. And the orange and the red sun setting in the distance. A group of birds and one bird. That bird, as the mountain had his eyes closed, sat on the shoulder. Whoa, rumbled the mountain. 
I'm a tiny bird. I'm coming all the way from the Himalayas. I don't know how long I've been flying, but I hurt my left knee. Can I please, please stay for some time because I can't fly anymore. And I don't know. I didn't tell my mother, father, my grandfather, grandmother. So can I please stay for some time, please? You talk too fast. I don't understand a word. Oh, you can't fly? No. You can't move at all? No. You're fixed? Mm-hmm. How sad. Now, this was how I was telling him the story. And he said, oh my God, I can't interpret the sounds. I, ca I can't do f f f along with you. So what I'm going to do, he said, is this. That I'm going to give gaps. Only the sound part, you will do it. Because in sounds, there is no Portuguese, there's no English. Isn't it? So the howling winds, woo, 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 woo. There's no need for interpretation. And then it was very strange. As I began to tell the story and said, and the mountain heaved a sigh. He felt sad, lonely. There were mixed feelings. You know what he said? He said, I think I'll stop. And I'm not going to interpret at all. Because I'm sure feelings can be understood by the audience. And that's what happened. So he just did bits of my story. And when I said, and the mountain <gasps> sighed, and he yearned for that bird to return. And he longed, he looked. He looked at the horizon as the sun began to set and wondered if the bird would return at all. When? And there was joy. There was a joyous feeling in the mountain. <gasps> wow. She's so beautiful when she flies. Look at the sunset colors. So as I kept telling the story, I found the audience also standing up. Some of them crying when the mountain, <gasps> uh, two drops dropped. And then he couldn't hold it and he <laughs> cried. And he cried so much that it became a waterfall and became a beautiful lake. And I could see the audience <laughs> crying. So you see, it was a beautiful experience for me. And I also remember at the end of the story, as I completed the story, they just removed all their headphones. They ran to the stage. 1,500 audience pushing and pulling each other. I only found that sometimes in our temples or <laughs> when we have Kumbh Mela. But this time, some of them were climbing up and they hugged me. And they said, Linda, Linda, Linda. And it was a very aesthetic feeling. A static feeling, I should say. I mean, it was a beautiful feeling. Uh, and that is how I know the culture of that place. Yeah, Because they're very expressive, extremely expressive people. Now, the same story when I told in Scotland. And I told them the story of the golden crane, which is another favorite tale of mine from Japan. And as I was telling the story, I told them how the waves lashed high up and came and hit the mountain. And the mountain said, I understand your moods. I know. And sometimes they would be mellow and they'll come and slowly touch the mountain as if to say, I'm sorry. And I said, even the waves have their moods, right? 
And sometimes they would be, sometimes like a woman, huh? like human beings. And you will see the Scottish audience. They were all. They didn't wink. They didn't blink. They didn't move. So I was not sure whether they liked the story or not. And I went on because I had a bubble and I, I was saying, oh, they love it. <laughs> And I continued with the story. 40 minutes I went on with that story. I sang a song. Kava Sumo. A frog song. I sang a boat song for them. Doku Dino Jiso Ni Suke Kasa Kabusi Na Jisa Mano Iye Vado boats that went with one single lamp as they disappeared into the Matsubara sea. The women and the children watched. And I sang the song. And I finished the story of the golden crane and a thousand golden cranes. And then I, I bowed because that's what the Japanese do. And I said, thank you for listening to my story. And they all just sat, I mean, they all just stood up. And for 15 minutes, they clapped. Now, that is their way of responding, isn't it? So they were so different from the crowd in Brazil who are extremely expressive outwardly. But these people were very, they were what we call Akashnam, no? They just took in everything. And then they stood up and they kept clapping. So you see, these are the beautiful experiences that one has when you take stories to different lands. That's my experience too. Of course, I can't leave the children because that's how I started with. So for children, I usually use, there is one story in the book called Gegol, the frog. Gegol. Okay. And this Gegol doesn't listen at all to his mother. I'm sure this happened a lot during the pandemic and otherwise too. So there was Gagel. And every time the mother called out his name, uh, let me see that. Yeah, okay. So every time his mother said, Gagel, Gagel. Pulge. Pulge. Gegol. My name is Pulge. Gegol. Pulge. The mother gave up. What is he going to understand that it's Gegol? Pulge. <laughs> now, whatever he said, whatever he did, Whatever the mother said, he would do the opposite. Okay, so his mother would say, come here, I want to say something important. Tell me, ma'am, what? Tell me, ma'am, what? Because I'm going to sit on the, on the, on the lily pad. Hmm? Don't jump on the lily pad. <laughs> okay, jump as high as you want. Don't look for the butterflies. So 
So you always sit the opposite of what his mother said. So this children love very much because you know they do that, right? So one day the mother said, don't come near me because I don't want to say something important. Gay gul, don't come near me, okay? Hmm. I have to say something important. Uh, maybe I won't live too long. Oh, maybe. Okay, uh, 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 because the mother wanted to be buried on top of the hill. But since he always did the opposite, you know what she told him? You know, when I die, why don't you bury me uh, near the pond? Near the lake? Mm. Is that all? You won't die. Okay, Gagun. And then one day, it so happens that all of us, those who are born, we get old, isn't it? And so the mother also died. But then, this is a time when he realized, he said, oh my God, my mother always taught me a song. And he sang. Okay, let me listen to my mother. Let me uh, uh, make something here and put her over here. That's when all the frogs realize that Gekul has changed. And they all came around him as he was digging and they all helped him and they buried the mother and they covered and they all protected when the waters came and they all sang he missed his mother and then slowly he said Gegul, that's my name, Gegul. Well, so, uh, so there are stories that would appeal to a child. And this was actually from Korea. And I heard the story from a person in Japan. So they use what we call as Kamishibai. So that was, uh, so I can go on and on because I'm a storyteller, right? So. I can go on and on, but I'm not spinning tales. These are real tales, real tales of travel, superseded with tales, which is not too real, but they are stories after all. So there is a truth and a story together in this book. And so I'm sure at least one, two, three stories may appeal to you. And I'm sure you'll enjoy it a lot. And do uh, let me know if you buy the book and you can uh, send me a feedback. It's not too expensive. Uh, I'm sure uh, I, I've sent Alvin the link. You get it on Amazon.in. And you can also order if you want an autographed copy from a place called Funky Rainbow in Bangalore. Yeah. So... Yeah, that's what I wanted to share today, uh, that stories mean a lot to me. Stories have always meant to be there. They were there. That's why I say the universe is made up of stories. Before the world was created, there was a story. With the world, with creation came stories. Stories flow like the river. They join the ocean and start another river again. So they have no end at all. Stories continue. They keep on forever. So they are like shells we pick up 
from the shore. And each shell is different. Each storyteller is different. And each story is different. And just like we collect these shells, I think it's lovely when you collect these stories. And they say that when you keep a shell, you can also hear the distant sea. When the mind is quiet, when the heart is still, then listen to every sound of the story. And that is why I always say that storytellers can be great healers. Yeah. I think you've been lovely listeners. I didn't give you any time to interact at all, but uh, <laughs> well, uh, I would love to uh, take uh, questions, Alvin, is that fine? Yes, ma'am, definitely. So I, I have a question first. So, no, so, to, so today we are celebrating this book, Tales from the World. Yeah. And uh, you have just opened our eyes and uh, you have given a different dimension to the way we look at this book. It's not just an ordinary book, but a collection of experiences of love, which have been weaved together by you. and. Uh, so by reading the stories, actually, you have given us a window to your own life as well. So thank you so much for uh, bringing this book for us. And uh, my dear friends, children and uh, everyone who are present here, the link to the book is already given in the chat. Yeah, so kindly pick it up. Yeah, get it. And let's make this book a sellout. Yeah, and that's what we want. Yeah. <laughs> Then I can write more books. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, so already hands are raised to, to ask you questions, ma'am. But I have one personal question. So you mentioned in your uh, talk that uh, you have written this story just like the way you narrated. And when I read it, it also felt the same. I also felt the same. It was very interesting. Yeah. So, do you think it's best uh, that we read this book aloud, where you know we sit together and read this book aloud? Absolutely. I think the best effect that uh, a story can have is when you read it aloud, mm. uh, especially um, if parents want to read it aloud to the children. And there's no unparliamentary word at all in this book. I have uh, carefully uh, seen that every word is a valuable word. Uh, so there is nothing that you need to avoid while reading aloud so it would be wonderful if you can read aloud and i think as parents you can bring your own voice and sounds boom bang you know that's all that's how i've tried to put because i couldn't put like all that right but so, but mom can teach us a few sounds mom yeah so that will be helpful <laughs> when we read this book yeah sure 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 so uh I, I, I thought I, uh, one thing that helps a story is also a music. Mm -hmm. So those who are good at music can add music, just like how I added for the Japanese song. Um, or uh, 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 for instance, for that African, there are two African stories. So mm -hmm. you could add like a drum beat, you know, or a song. Shows a loza, shows a loza, shows a loza. Kien buta bas, sipeya simbeya ma. Sipeya simbeya ma. Shows a loza, kien zuta bas, sipeya simbeya ma. Ho, 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 ho. See, that gives that get up for the music, I mean, the, the song, you know, it's an African song. So it's, it's these simple words, uh, you can even get it on the net now that Google is available. Mm. So this is one thing that one can do. Um, uh, like there is a, a, a story I'm going to share uh, for the uh, Bombay Museum, uh, Children's Museum on mm. Sunday. And I'll be adding a, a beautiful song of uh, uh, for that uh, Scottish tale that I'm going to narrate. Mm. So, uh, and you you can also pick up some of these um, uh, songs from films if you want to add uh, songs like uh, uh, "Come feed the little birds, show them you care." 
And you'll be glad if you do. The young ones are hungry, the nests are so bare. All it takes is stopping. Wow. Yeah, it's a beautiful bird woman. This is in a, a movie called Mary Poppins. Mary Poppins. And she calls the birds to feed them. Feed the birds. Tuppence are back. Tuppence. Tuppence. You know, it's beautiful. So you can just, you know, pick up songs if your strength is song. But if you want to have sounds, then you, you, you don't have to bring exact sounds. For instance, the wind can be a howling wind. Okay, it can be a gentle breeze. Ooh. Ooh. Right? Listen. Just listen. The, the leaf just touched the ground. And it swirled in the wind. Oh, there was a forest fire. Oh, raging. Yeah, so, well, you can bring it from your throat, you can bring it from your nose, it depends, and you don't have to have any extra sounds. So don't feel lazy, just try. Actually, ma'am teaches a lot about these voice modulations in our yes. courses, so if you are very particular about voice modulations, I would suggest that you attend hers. Now, coming back to the book, so as you see, it's a colorful book, that is a snippet about what ma'am was mentioning there are yes. a lot of pictures too so this is a book to be read aloud this is a book where you can enjoy the pictures and this is a book where you can have fun by making those sounds singing those songs and have great fun so i'm sure most of you would like to uh, know receive the link to this uh, video because ma'am has shared super duper input super duper sound super duper stories so if you would like to receive the youtube link and also the link to the book so kindly fill in this form and uh, i will send it to you uh, by tomorrow so right now as we open out for questions you know we have time for three questions so as we open out for the questions in the meantime do fill in the form yeah and i would send this lovely session and the link to the book but hey why wait for tomorrow the link is in the chat. Get it now. <laughs> wow. Thanks, Alvin. Yeah. yeah. So the registration form and the uh, link to the book are in the chat. Now we open up for questions. So we have time for three questions. And I saw Miss Anu, you raising your hand. So it's yes. your turn. Yeah. Yes. Hi, ma'am. Good evening. Uh, yes. Just two, three days back, I received the book. Uh, unfortunately, I missed your autograph book. And, uh, you know, uh, Alvin gave the show link announcement, uh, you know, two, three days back. And it was, uh, you know, coordinated together. And I was so happy. And I'm going to start reading this book with your voice. Wow. Thank you so much. And I'm, I'm waiting to join your, you know, in house yes. class very soon. Please do. Please do. I'll be yes. very happy. In fact, we are also opening again offline. Uh, we are going to start uh, our first offline, will be uh, in uh, April. We are having offline uh, beginners as well as diploma. Both we are going to start in April. The next uh, online is uh, now in February, uh, yeah. in, not in March. So yeah. March we have the, yeah. yeah I got join. the message, I'm sure I'll be there. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Thank, thank, thank you. Alvin thank for you so. that platform. <laughs> sure. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Anu. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Meenu, it's now uh, over to you. Yeah. Yes, Meenu. Oh, sorry, please unmute again. Go ahead. So, namaste, firstly, ma'am, uh, and thanks to technology. I don't know when I will meet you face to face, but I'm <laughs> a friend since second lockdown, and I'm from Pokhara. And through social media, I met with you, and really a big fan. Oh. So, thanks to technology that I today I just. Joanne and hear you and really what a gesture 
or the expression. I really <laughs> big fan. I don't know um, when I will meet or uh, just uh, you share that uh, your diploma training will be from April, I think. Yes. 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 Uh, through online mode. No, it's going to be offline. Offline, yeah. So yeah. again, I miss it, but. Uh, uh, I really uh, just see when I started my early childhood development center, I'm working in the early childhood okay. uh, center and I saw the impact, how the storytelling impact a lot in the development of child. Absolutely. And, uh, I, I worked uh, in the rural area uh, uh -huh. where the parents are not so aware about the impact of storytelling and uh, they work in the field, they don't have that uh, Mm, how to connect with the children through the story. So I just started in uh, our ECD center, uh, everyday storytelling and just uh, give the touch of book, picture, and um, picture, picture books, hardcover books. Just try to connect uh, the student uh, with the books, mm. with the picture, with the colors. And I really- uh, I think you're it, doing a great, great job actually. Mm. It's such a beautiful thing because when we started Katalia Trust, we started only with reach out sessions. Uh, we have reached out to 122 NGOs uh, through our sessions. So uh, it will be wonderful. Uh, I think we have online before the offline. Just check our calendar because I uh, write to us, uh, Meenu, uh, at katalia gmail.com. And uh, if you write to us, uh, we will send you the details of the online course. I think we have one online before the offline. So you could join our online course. Yes. Uh, so it's just uh, raise my curiosity that uh, why not go to this very systematically and all the um, patterns of storytelling and just connect uh, to my students, to my children Wonderful. for the quality time and uh, uh, and why not make the learning so enjoyable through the story? Yes. The story wonderful. has the power. Absolutely. No doubt at all. Thank you. Thank you, thank so, you Minos. Thank you. Thank for you this. so much. So we have time for one last question. Would anyone like to ask a question? Yeah. Anything related to storytelling? Anything related to the book? Yeah. So. All right. Yeah. Okay, so Rouhani, you have a question for ma'am. Yeah, go ahead, Rouhani. I don't have a question, but I wanted to tell that I read your book and it was amazing. Who's this? Uh, Rouhani, I'll add her to the spotlight. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Rouhani, come on, uh, give your compliments to ma'am again. Ma'am, I, yes. I read my oh, I read here. Your, I read your book and one of my friends came to borrow it also. Whoa. Ask her to buy. <laughs> <laughs> but Ruani, which class are you? I'm in third grade. So uh, what did you like? The lion and the mosquito? No, ma'am. The huh. best story was the one you told here. Uh, Gegul? Gegul, yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> okay. How sweet. <laughs> Thank you so much, Rohani. Uh, I think this is the best compliment. Nothing like coming from a child. And uh, I'll always treasure your compliment a lot, Rohani. And thanks for lending it to your friend. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank Ruhani. you. Thank, Thank you, you, Rohani. So, so we are now going to take a quick group snap. So I request everyone to yeah. turn on your videos. So you take a group group photo and. Uh, yeah, I can see Vinayak, Pinal, oh, Pinal is here. Oh, great, Ambujavali. Oh. <laughs> okay, so everyone. We are yes. going to be together on uh, the museum, right? The, you're also telling a story there. Okay, so all those who have the book, show a copy of your book. Yeah, let me also show mine. How can I get this How book can in Pokhran, Main Park? Okay, maybe you should uh, write to ma'am. Uh, yeah, just yeah, write, write to us at katalia gmail.com and I'm sure uh, yeah. uh, there should be some way of. Uh, mm, sure. 
Okay, so all those who have your copy of your book, show it to us and give a yes. big smile too. Yeah. Me too. That. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. And it was a pleasure and an honor to have hosted this event. And Geeta Ma'am, thank you so much for sharing your lovely inputs, your lovely experiences. Wow. Wow. How much love you have received, how much love you have given. Thank you so much, ma'am, for sharing it with us. And with that, with this, we call the, we bring this session to a close. I'm sure all of you would like to meet, ma'am, ask a lot of questions, but unfortunately. Yeah, I always tell people, uh, we are at Catalia in Bangalore. Mm. Uh, always, most of the year, nice weather. In fact, I just came back from Mysore. Mysore is even more beautiful. So if you want to go to Mysore, I can help you. Come to ba Katalia, come to Bangalore. Let's have fun. And we'll have stories all along the way. All of you are welcome. And I think uh, now after the pandemic, I think we should all be rejoicing and we should be laughing and we should be happy, isn't it? So Definitely. I think happiness is what everyone is looking for. Okay, so let's spread this happiness so Definitely. that COVID will get scared and never come back again. Okay, so uh, thank you so much, Alvin. Uh, thank such you, a much. heartfelt, lovely, wonderful way of organizing a lovely book launch for me. Actually, the thank Puffin you. should be doing it on their own, but there are a lot of my friends doing this and I'm very happy for this. Uh, so Thank see you, you all sometime soon and I hope you uh, send me uh, your uh, honest feedbacks and that will help me to probably write another book. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Thanks, Thank Rasika. You, Thank you, Anuradha. Thank you, Vinayak. Thank you, Harshita, Ambujavali and Pinal. Yes, of course. Ah, South Indian food. Yes. Sure, sure, sure. So thank you so much, everyone. Thanks again. Thank you. Thank you all. Love you all. Yeah. And hope we will meet yes. in offline mode. Thank yes. you so much and see you all soon. Thank you. Thanks, Alvin. Thank you so much. Man. It was a pleasure having you. Man. Same here. <laughs>